For too long, quilts and quilters were viewed as crafts. The art world until recently did not deem quilts as works of art. Thankfully, that has changed, and we are glad to be part of the movement to place these exquisite pieces of art on our walls. As a regional museum dedicated to have exhibitions and activities to serve our community, it was important to reach out to local quilters. Coincidentally, the exhibition was during Black History and Women's History Month. We felt this was the perfect exhibition to create lectures, workshops, to enhance the experience for the community. Jane and I both knew quilters and thought a quilt exhibition would be a change from our typical exhibitions. In approaching our mutual friends, we learned of the friendly quilters of Bucks County and Princeton Sankofa Stitcher's Modern Quilt Guild. These two groups of African-American female quilters were the source for the quilts in this exhibition. The quilters provided us with a breathtaking array of quilts. Given the physical limitations of our space, we limited the submission of three quilts from each quilter. In selecting the quilts for the exhibition, we focused on the styles, sizes, colors, and themes. We didn't need to worry about quality as all the submissions were exquisite and of the highest caliber. Our challenge was the placement of the quilts given the wall space. In placing the quilts, we were conscious of the juxtaposition of size and color. The quilts are as visually stunning on the back as on the front. As we traditionally hang art on the walls, we did not already have a system for hanging quilts that would allow the viewer to see the front and the back. Rose Miller's black, white, and red with confidence and Wanda Marie Ginkle's In God We Trust, Where's the G-Spot? are two examples of quilts where the backs were equally as stunning as the front. Some quilts tell personal or community stories or just explore the imagination of the quilter in a variety of styles, color, forms, and imagery. We see that African themes and motifs are an emerging theme of this exhibition. Maud Southwell Walham, in her book, Signs and Symbols, African Images and African American Quilts, wrote, Most African American quilt making derives its aesthetics from various African traditions, both technological and ideological. You see the color, textiles, and images from Africa in many of these quilts. Two examples are Rose Miller's Disappearing Names and Adrian Daniels' Adinkra Quilt. My love of quilting and my desire to co-curate this exhibition go hand in hand with my love of history and storytelling. I've heard it said that quilts are a type of visual conversation. And I believe that these conversations embody a deep history that not only evoke artistry, but community and ancestral tones that leap and vocalize off the very canvas that they're sewn on. If you follow quilting in the history of African-American quilters, nowhere has that been more evident in this country than those quilts produced by the women of the small rural Alabama community of G's Bend. When I look at these quilts, it reminds me of my gullah roots through both my mom and dad and the hand-woven baskets made by the gullah community used for winnowing, which entails the process of separating chaff from rice. These were work baskets that ultimately and deservedly were displayed in the 20th century as works of art. Here is the connection I see with the Ode to G's Bend quilts. Once the product of a community that used them to live and keep their families warm, however, we know them to be so much more. If you look close, you can see that these two are baskets, woven, strong, yet simple, purposeful, yet wholly unique. There has been much debate as to whether quilts were used as hidden messages for freedom seekers along the Underground Railroad. 
and made a Cole Galloway's Morse code Ubuntu hidden message. She vividly affirms her belief that these messages were real and demonstrates with flashes of red and black just how code may have come across to those freedom seekers. The word Ubuntu, which derives from a mixture of South African Zulu and Kosa words, meaning simply humanity, or I am because we are. This homage to ancestors both across the Atlantic and throughout the enslavement of Africans in America sends a message that freedom is both elusive but never impossible. I am because we are. Gail Mitchell's Obama quilt uses signature patches signed and messaged by various people Gail met along her travels, including the Democratic National Convention. Her quilt is textile poetry. And if you turn the page, you see that Gail's mastery of quilting exists on both sides. We were able to hang the Obama quilt in a way we were unable to hang the other quilts in the exhibition, which have equally stunning reverse sides. We can also read into the elaborate detail of both sides as a metaphor for President Obama's own life and presidency, a duality. Firmly centered is the face of Obama, surrounded by messages of hope, signed, sealed, and delivered as yours. In Cassandra Gunkel's Ode to Trayvon 4, you see several things immediately, scale, color, and content. She uses the portrait of Trayvon Martin in a block format, using four large images of Trayvon as the world saw him, a young black male in a hoodie, before he died. When you walk into the Malloy Gallery, the quilt stands out. The quilt was purposely placed in between her self-liberator quilts, a large format quilt in two pieces of images of African-American historical freedom fighters. This juxtaposition of Trayvon and historical freedom fighters places his murder in the historical fight for freedom of all African-Americans. Cassandra masterfully uses common fabric, blue jeans. The use of blue jean material connotes the commonality of the historical murdering of our young black males, that it is, and always has been, too much. The color blue is commonly associated with sorrow, the sorrow Cassandra felt, and all of us feel, whether we are mothers, fathers, siblings, or grandparents, when our young are being shamelessly and needlessly murdered. The beauty of a hand-stitched quilt is no different than the beauty and delicacy we find in a homemade meal. As one of the only quilts in the exhibition that is stitched entirely by hand, Linda Botley's round robin quilt reminds me of the quilting I recall from my youth. Her use of African tones and colors reemphasizes her intention to pay homage to the ancestors. No different than a pot of gumbo, each ingredient, like every hand stitched fabric, is, as they say, saying something. I believe the artist is infusing a powerful dialogue with some elements of the string quilt surfacing from within the stitching. The story that rises from this quilt is one of warmth and homeland. There is no place like home. We would like to thank the friendly quilters of Bucks County and the Princeton Sankofa Stitchers Modern Quilt Guild for this opportunity to exhibit extraordinary artwork by African-American women. 
We hope these works have inspired the community. Unfortunately, the exhibition has been cut short, but we hoped you enjoyed this virtual tour and our thoughts about the planning and presentation of this exhibition. We look forward to sharing a multitude of art, African-American art and artists with you in the future.